Yo, Elliot, so I finally made the big move to Pennsylvania. This is my second day here, and I already landed a construction position working for a builder. Congrats, brother. My question is, what other things can I do to stimulate my mind creatively in this field or maybe on another passion project since I left the personal training? Uh, my current passions are lifting, basketball skills, and I was thinking of getting into hunting, getting my gun license in PA, and also philosophical ideas. My opinion is work the construction work job. Work the construction job to the best of your ability, putting all your eggs in that basket, and maybe working your way up, getting raises, becoming a part of the union. I don't know how it works out there, but I'm sure that if you put your time, you put your effort, and you, you show yourself to be a worthwhile contribution, to your company and to your boss that you can earn a good living. I really and truly believe that. I am, I don't know how much you're earning now, but I think that if you focus on that, that's the problem, man, right now. Biggest problem we have, right? I, you know, I'm not calling you guys out because I'm right there with you. We have too many options, too many opportunities, too many ideas, too many shiny objects and bunny rabbits running past our eyes that we get ADD all day long. That's all we got is ADD all fucking day long. Really, we're not designed to be so pulled apart and pulled in different directions and focusing on this and focusing on that, trying to do this, trying to do that, trying to do too many damn things, man. Too many things. And my dad will always talk about this too, man. And if I notice my father, there's two things he does. Two things, and my dad's got a, he loves his life. He's 71, he's gonna be 71 years old. He just turned 70 actually in July. He loves his life. But my father's simple, simple, simple man. Get up every day and do your job. What does that mean? Go to work. Go to work and do your job. My dad has two things that he does go to work, and when he comes home, it's, He's, he's a father. Let me put it this way. My father grows things. He grew a family. He had children. But then my father grows trees and plants. And He's a gardener. So he's doing one of two things. He's either working on cars or he's growing things, growing people or growing plants, right? My dad's not interested in philosophy, although he's got the mo some of the most wild out philosophical ideas ever. When you get into a conversation with my father, he'll drop all kinds of life wisdom. My dad never read Schopenhauer and, and Muji and Osho and Alan Watts and Nietzsche. My dad, knows, he don't know who the fuck any of, that, who any of that is. In fact, most of those people only have the opportunity to think in those circles and, and, and really mentally masturbate because life is too good. My dad grew up in the jungle and it was survival of the fittest. So my dad's, all my dad's philosophical ideas come from living, right? So you say you're working, but now you have a little extra time to do other things. Number one is I know you have a daughter, right? I know you have a daughter. Maybe there's some time that you can spend with your child, right? Maybe because you and the mother are split up, you can spend some time with the child teaching how to, how to dribble a basketball, right? How to play soccer. Like I said, now I'm excited because I get to do training with my kids. I train my kids in the gym. You were a personal trainer, right? I don't know how old your daughter is, but maybe start training your daughter, right? It's one of the cool things that I like to do. It's like a passion project for me. It's like, you know, creating programs for my kids. But my point, really what I want to get to here is working is survival. Working is survival. And you will always work. You will always work. It was our curse from the garden where... God said to Adam that you will have to work, you will have to live off the sweat of your brow. And you will sow seeds and it will give you thorns. Basically, life's going to be hard and you have to work. Now that you're aware, right? You took that fruit. Okay, you want to have the mind of God. Now you're self-aware, self-conscious. You're going to work, right? No longer like animals in the, in the, in the, in the paradise. We got to work, right? You got to work. Regardless, you got to work. What kind of work, how much you work, all depends on your temperament, who you are, why you're here, and what you're doing. You are a construction worker. Right now, that's what you are. Construction. Do that. But on the flip side, right, because you have a life outside of work. You got family. But then outside of family, I tell you what consumes most of my time, right? I got my work. I got training. I got my family. But if I'm going to learn any skills, right, I'm going to learn any skills. You talk about basketball skills and stuff. I'm going to learn skills that are useful 
in a collapse situation. I'm convinced that we're going to face collapse. We're going to see a collapse or a cratering of the food the, the, the food system, right? We're going to see a, a, cra- a collapse and a cratering of the monetary system. We may see it from the electrical grid. You, uh, there's a myriad of different places that we are we are on a, ca- a house of cards, right? So many different aspects of our lives have been outsourced to a house of cards. You got to learn how to, I think it's going to be incumbent upon us. Okay, who you are, where you at? to understand and to learn and to practice survival skills. You said, should I get my hunting license so I could go hunting? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. My neighbors catch alligators. It's the craziest shit, oh man. I don't know if you guys can see this. I don't even know if it's a good idea for me to do it. But you gotta check out this 12 foot alligator that my neighbor caught. My neighbors are so cool because they know how to do stuff. Look at that. Can you see that hanging there? It's on the crane right now. He's coming up. Yeah, he's standing next to it. I hope you guys can see that. He's standing next to it. 12 foot alligator. He knows how to hunt alligators. This is my neighbor, Big Red. He knows how to hunt alligators. He knows how to go fishing. He knows how to. He has six pit bulls, he told me. I got six pit bulls because I take them hog hunting. That's him. That's not me. Well, I'm happy I know this dude and I try to. Pick his brain as much as I can. There was an alligator in my lake in the back, right? Small alligator. And he set a trap. He put a beef lung out there. I'm like, wow, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, you put the beef lung because it floats on the water. And then when the alligator comes and eats it, you know he's in there. He wrestled this 300, this it's like a 500 pound alligator. He said that it was like 100 years old. And he was explaining the whole process to me. How he shot it with an arrow first that had a, had a string on it, right? That way he can track it, right? And then he had to shoot it with another harpoon that like sticks into the alligator and then he could he could actually pull it because the arrow you can't pull it it was just to, so he doesn't get away then he has this one and then he pulled the alligator then he's got this long stick called a um a boom stick <laughs> i think that's what he called it or a bang stick he said yeah you get a bang stick what's a bang stick it's a long stick right it's just a long stick pole but at the end you have i think it said he told me it holds 357 rounds 357 right that's the caliber a bullet that it holds in it and then what you do with the with the spear is you hit the alligator right here. So you just find him and you go bang. And you hit him, boom, bullet right in his head. That guy knocks out. And then you gotta he had to roll him into the boat, but he couldn't do it because he was too strong. And that guy that you saw in that picture, he's like 300 pounds. He's a huge dude. He's like 6'6, 300 pounds. He couldn't wrestle that alligator, so he had to call his friend. Why am I telling you this? Because you gotta know how to do shit like that, right? You catch that alligator, that may be good eating for a couple weeks for you and your family. You say you wanna go learn how to hunt. Yeah, learn how to hunt. Learn how to hunt in Pennsylvania, man. But learn more things, too. Learn how to fish. Learn how to grow. I just had 12 orange trees planted on my property. And I'm going to get more. I'm going to get mangoes. I'm going to get uh, bananas. I'm going to get peaches and apples. All that. I have this nice little acre right next to my pool. You know, across the, across the way. Not next to it, but across from my pool. And I'm going to learn how to, how, to, how to do fruit trees. I've learned and I'm learning how to do solar power, how to put up my own solar power, right? All these things that are related to survival. Learn how to barter and trade. Learn how to fight, right? Like you literally legitimately might need to learn how to throw or throw bows, right? Anything related to survival in a grid down collapse situation, right? Maybe I'm paranoid. I don't know. But I'm convinced that those are the things that have come in handy for you. Basketball skills, I don't think that's going to come in handy, right? Lifting skills, that's cool. You already know them, but you do that so that you can stay fit. I was thinking about, I'm always thinking about this shit. I was thinking about what can I contribute to my neighbors? Because I got a lot of great neighbors. I got like two sets of neighbors, right? My house is like right at the junction, and I got neighbors this way and neighbor that way. And it's so funny because you come up the block and you see my house first. And you go this way and it's all wealthy, right? So I got all wealthy neighbors over there, right? These are people that like own the big businesses. They own nurseries and arboretariums and all kinds of shit. They live up there, builders and things, right? So I got all the wealthy neighbors over there. And then back here, I got my backwoods redneck neighbors. And I love them both. I love both, both types. And the reason why I tell you that is because... I want to be of value to my neighborhood, right? It's a very small neighborhood back here. And I don't know everybody. We're going to have a barbecue pretty soon. I invite all these people. 
And I was thinking like, okay, I know how to train, right? So that's something I know how to do. It's not necessarily survival. But if we get into a situation where we have to become our own little mini militia, I can set up obstacle courses. I was thinking about it in my front yard. I was like, I can set up obstacle courses and set up tra a training ground, right? Like if we, have, if we legit are in a, in, a, in a civil war and we know that it, it's inevitable that they're going to come our way, I would set up, I, would, I have enough land here and know-how to set up training. I would set up training. I don't have the guys come here and we would we we do our formations. I got books. I got books on uh, small team tactical, right? I've never been in the military. A lot of these guys have been, so I buy books so I could. So I'm not totally stupid. But small teams tactical training we would do, right? Anyway, that's where my mindset is at. My mindset is at what do I do to survive for today, and what can I do to help for tomorrow? Me knowing that any normalcy bias that I have will quickly be refuted if the petrodollar loses its stance as the world currency, the world standard currency, reserve currency. Like, that could happen. Like, it might happen. Like, it's on its way of happening. And if that happens, it don't matter. It don't matter how well you play Nintendo. It don't matter how well you dribble a basketball. It don't matter how fast you can count to 100. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be, can you survive? Can you protect yourself if someone's coming after you? Can you feed yourself if there's no food? Can you get water, purify water, clean drink, drinking water if the grid goes down? Right? These are all things you got to think about. So that's my opinion, right? Do your work in a construction job. I don't know what those guys are like. I would imagine you're around a lot of manly men. And these are probably men that know how to do stuff. Right? Ask them, hey, you guys go hunting? I'd love to learn. That's what I said to Big Red. Right? I'm like, man, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Yankee. Right? I got my Florida hat on because I've legit been here for almost 20 years. But I, I grew up like a Yankee. Man, I don't know anything about shooting game. They were telling me about how they sit in their backyard and shoot doves during uh, the next season. They were saying it's land hunting season. He says they, they'll stay in his backyard and they'll shoot like, you know, 20, 30 doves. Then they make this big fire, and they cook all the doves, and they just sit there like for the rest of the evening just eating dove meat. <laughs> it's like, wow, these guys ain't going to starve. That's why I came out here, because I want friends like that. Anyway, so I hope that helps you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.